Hey there folks and welcome to another Friday Night Spotlight brought to you by Jones Ford Buick GMC, your hometown dealer for more than 50 years. We're going to just jump right into things and our game of the week is ALA Ironwood traveling to Florence. Now, big news here is this is a completely different a ALA Ironwood team from the past couple of seasons. The past couple of years they were 1 and 26. This year they're 3 and 3. So expect some big things from this Warriors team that we're not really used to seeing. Um, David, what are you looking for in this game? When you said already, Maria, this a ALA team has been absolutely shocking everybody with their play. You know, the last three years they've won one game in that whole span. And now they're starting at 3 and 3, and it looks like that they're building a, a very solid foundation for the future. Junior quarterback Connor Malt has been fantastic this year. 987 passing yards and 10 touchdowns. Then when you talk about Aiden Williams and Ryan Hammer, they've been a great backfield pair for the for the Warriors, rushing for 346 and 332 rushing yards respectively. So the offense has done very well so far this season. And for Florence, they're two and four on the year so far, and I think it really comes down to quarterback Jet Scott. Uh, he has thrown for 616 yards, which is a pretty good number so far this season, but he has the same number of passing touchdowns as he does interceptions at seven. He's thrown seven TDs, thrown seven picks. So that's gonna, it's really going to come down to, to Scott, and if he's able to focus on taking care of the ball when he drops back to pass. Uh, he's got to get the offense into a rhythm, and it's going to start with him in this one for me. Uh, if they can't, if they can get down the field so much, but if he keeps throwing it up and the ball gets thrown to the other team, it's not going to work very well for them. Uh, I'm like we've said. I'm shocked by the by the Iron, by Ironwood's ability to get some wins going. I I'm taking them for the win this time. I, I really like this team. Okay, so I do have to point out Florence's game last week was against Queen Creek Benjamin Franklin. They had bl already blown out a couple of our Pinal County teams, but Florence limited them to 230 yards. That's the second lowest uh, Benjamin Franklin has rushed this year, so that's saying a lot about this Gopher defense. Um, David touched upon it. ALA Ironwood has a very balanced offense with their qu um, quarterback and their and their running game. However, for Florence. You know, I'm looking at, uh, I'm also looking at the run game with Caleb Lewis and Victor Aguirre. Both of these have over 200 rushing yards and three touchdowns each. Um, additionally, Tommy Carberry has been fantastic at wide receiver for the Gophers. He's the go-to guy for Jet Scott, 404 receiving yards, five touchdowns. Defensively, it's going to come down. Can they throw off um, the Warriors game? And that's going to come down to Adomi Barnett, again, Victor Aguirre, and Ryan King. Um, as a total team, the Gophers have 10 sacks. And also in the backfield, look for Javon Williams and Tommy Carberry again, who each have two interceptions for the Gophers. David, is there anything else you think the people should know about this game? You know, Maria, I've picked against the, uh, the Warriors every week so far in our little picks battle here, but this week I'm not doing it. I'm a believer in the Warriors finally, and I think they got the win here. I think they can get into that over 500 mark, go 4-3. and three. I think this is a good foundation for this team that could set them up for some good success in the next couple of years. All right, and th that does it for our breakdown of Game of the Week. Now we're going to transition over to our picks portion. David, what game do you have your eye on this week? This week I got Post and Butte in Northwest Christian, and the reason I want to talk about Post and Butte is that I was at their game last week covering them against Cactus, and they basically ran into a wall. The Cobras were absolutely phenomenal against them. Uh, Cobras l limited them to only six points in the game. Uh, they were led by a huge seven-touchdown performance by Will Galvin. But even with that, this is the only time that the Bronco offense has really been shut down. They've had a very good offense in the previous weeks. Their lowest score total was 28 uh, in their opening uh, opening contest, and their highest was 41. So this is still a very good offense that can run and gun with the best of them. And it just comes down to can they get Octavius Joe running? Uh, he's their, their starting running back. He has been a huge playmaker for them. He had a big 82-yard touchdown run last week against Cactus, and that was basically all the offense. So it really comes down to Octavius Joe and if that offensive line and that offense in general can get him going. If he is on, this team is going to go far. So I think it really comes down to whether Post and Butte is ready to kind of put that one behind them. They got their butts kicked last week, and they're just putting it behind them and ready to, you know, just keep going throughout the rest of the season. Northwest Christian comes in with a 1-4 and four record, so I think this is a good game for the Broncos to get refocused, get their minds set back onto winning their region and getting themselves in a good position to hopefully contend for a championship in their, in their conference. Um, I like the matchup between the Broncos and Northwest Christian. I'm going with the Broncos for the win. 
All right, uh, real quickly, we're going to throw up the picks here. And for my game to watch, I am taking Sequoia Pathway hosting Tucson, uh, Tanque Verde. And both teams are 4-2 uh, so far this season. Last week, Pathway completely obliterated Tucson Catalina, 62-0. Uh, Tanque Verde uh, handily defeated Yuma Gila Ridge, 48-21. And I have to go with Tanque Verde in this one. Um, they have a pretty solid offense with quarterback Lucas Franklin, who has over 500 passing yards, seven touchdowns, and one interception. But his backup, who had a really good welcome party last week against Gila Ridge in Brendan Ganman, uh, he had four touchdowns and one interception and tossed for 261 yards. Uh, on the running game, Rory Mess. I'm going to butcher this name horribly, so we're just going to go with Rory here. <laughs> <laughs> so he has over 420 rushing yards, seven touchdowns, and it's really going to be a big task for Sequoia Pathways defense with Norian Banks and Kyrie's Banks, who have combined for 13 sacks, but also uh, Damian Lyons, Curtis David, and Weston Clee. What can these guys do to get into the backfield and try to slow down um, the offense? Offensively, Sequoia Pathway, it's all about their running game, and that starts with Trey Lacey, who has over 700 rushing yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, Cornell Reed Jr. and Jairi Gamble are also big contributors, but I think that Tanque Verde just has a more balanced offense, and, you know, compared to the one-dimensional offense that Sequoia Pathway has, I have to take Tanque Verde in this game. And once again, here are our picks for this week. And with that, that will do it for Friday Night Spotlight. Be sure to tune in over the weekend and check out all of our football coverage.